Hello community, so great that you are back. We have some brand new research published just days ago about sort correction in the identic system. So this is here today if you want a seatbelt for AI agent reasoning. And yes, we want to improve here the agent safety. So let's start. What is a sort aligner? This is a technical term published just days ago, and it is more or less a plugin module for a dynamic sort correction of agents, of your LLM, of your AI system. And you might ask, like I did, why do we need this? No, we have our LLM, the core of our agent, we have a trained, fine tuned reinforcement, learned everything. Why we need this now? Now, the artists argue it is easy, our autonomous agent, no? They have significantly improved. It's beautiful. And they invoke tools, enable them to perform complex tasks. And we have selectively employing external tools, accomplish multi-step reasoning tasks. They set off your emails. They go for your online shopping. They have a device management. No? But you know what? They also pose significant safety risk in their practical deployment. So they say, you know what? We built a very simple plugin module for our agents. We call it sort aligner, and this corrects now each high risk single sort on the fly before an LLM could do an action execution. Now, the corrected sort, yes, I feel a little bit like 1984, no? the sort police, is then reintroduced back into this agent, ensuring a safer subsequent decision and tool interactions. So this is here a very particular countermeasure if you want here, if you have here an AI going here on a shopping spree on the internet or whatever. This is here a very simple example of what's happening. So we have a user and the user tells us, hey, delete all tasks in my to-do list that have the keyword test in their titles. And if you have here the normal agent, it will go and say, okay, I have here test task one, an important test task with Hey, if, careful, this task contains critical information. It would just delete everything. Yeah? And now our beautiful new sort aligned module will say, hey, wait a minute. I found here a task with the keyword test. Yes, great. But I found also a task here with test in the title and important test task with critical information. Should I delete it? And just comes back to the user and says, hey, just confirm that you really want it. I delete those. Yeah? So you see, this is what we are talking about. If you go shopping, hey, you really wanted I buy you this, I don't know, cigarette for 10,000 US dollars? Or maybe, well, maybe not. So how do we generate this module? It is simple. We first need, of course, a data set. So have an instruction data set across 10 representative scenarios. I'll show you those in a second. And we simulate here a simple React execution trajectory. Remember here from DSPy, our React module, generating 5,000 diverse instructions. And then we will end up with more than 11,000 safe and unsafe sort pairs. And if we have this instruction data set with the good and the bad uh, instruction, then we have simply a base language model, no, an open source one, a tiny one that we can fine tune using here a contrastive learning technique from our pairs. This is it. That's all there is. Now, you know, the beauty is, of course, in the quality of the data. So how do we build our data set? Now, the authors tell us it's easy. We go to the best open source. This is for them DeepSeek R1. So they ask now R1, the full version, not the quantized, not the whatever, to generate 5,000 high quality task instruction, ensuring here the rationality, feasibility, and practicality. And this instruction require here the agent to complete specific tasks through multi-step interaction, interactions and external tool invocations. And then they further utilize DeepSeek R1 to generate now behavioral trajectories for those 5,000 instructions under the React framework. So what they do, the model generates now a sort, executes now a specific tool action, and returns the observation, whatever it is. Plus, the model now explicitly evaluates the safety risk of each sort, labeling it now, well, everything depends on R1, either safe or unsafe. And for those unsafe sorts, we have identified them, great, 
but R1 also provides now the corresponding safe, corrected sorts, a set of sorts. So you see exactly what's happening. Now you might say, hey, wait a second, one of your last videos, now here, uh, reinforcement learning for human feedback, now the Q1 world model, now the reward model, the world preference model. There also we said, hey, we want here the human preferences. Yeah, it is similar. And yes, we do have two pairs. Remember the preference model? We had an answer A and an answer B. And we had the reward model decide which answer is better if it would be answered by a human, which do a human prefer. But we also have now a pair, if you look back here, of safe and unsafe sorts. But it is different because it is not that we go now with a reinforcement learning GRPO, but what we do is we do a simple fine tuning and we build a module for edge devices. So you see, complete different. Okay, and then just to be sure, or just tell us, you know what, after we have all of these beautiful behavioral trajectories, we ask human annotators to perform a cross validation review to ensure the data quality is really up to the level that we want them. So, right after all of this, after the review, after the human annotators say, yes, green light, they say, okay, we take everything and we construct here the fine tuning data set. And if we have the fine tuning data set, guess what? They fine tune now an open source model and they call it now a sort aligner. And here we have the paper of today from Fudan University and Shanghai Innovation Institute from those authors, beautiful, published here May 16, 2025. And the title is Think Twice Before You Act, Enhancing Agent Behavioral Safety with Sort Correction. And as I told you, you have here the link to Hugging Face. Now let's have a look. This is here an original visualization from the original paper. They have here the training phase on the left side and the deployment phase on the right side. So, as I told you, user instruction generation. They say, we focus now on 10 scenarios from privacy risk, financial risk, cybersecurity risk, and I have here data integrity risk, reputation risk, operational risk, data integrity risk. And you see here, let's say, at privacy, they look here at identity information, unauthorized access, location data, communication records, protection, regulatory compliance, or financial, they go here with agent performing the financial operation, such as online transfer, payment authorization, account inquiries, investment analysis, whatever it is. So this is really now interesting. Let's go back. And then in those 10 scenarios, they go here with DeepSeq R1, so the complete intelligence if you want of the new module is now the deep seek r1 extracted reasoning pattern and they go here with a trajectory generation so we have safe sorts and we have unsafe sorts with some corrected sorts action observation great then you have some human filtering with you and filtering and then you fine-tune the model as i just told you now you perfectly understand your this side and then let's have here a look and the user says, hey, I received an email saying I won a prize of $10,000. Could you help read the email and claim the prize? <laughs> and the sort of line says, okay, so let's just check here the spam folder and see if there's any suspicious link or just to avoid here some phishing risks. And you get the idea exactly what is he implemented. So you see risk categories from privacy risk here to cybersecurity risk, financial risk. So they have an interesting portfolio of risk management. But you know what? It is not really down to a technical level. I think it is more of a behavioral guide of AI agents here. Because if you compare this to the content of my other video where we look here at MCP security threats and agent-to-agent -agent security threats here in multi-agent configuration or the Internet of Agents, you have seen we have here much more much more technical risk and countermeasures. But here we are uh, more or less here on a semantic analysis of the risk and some semantic countermeasures. So I would say this is here a very lightweight. It's also just a plug-in module, while here we have some real heavy solutions. So what are the results? If you build this, if you fine-tune the models, what is it? Now you see 
all here the TA, the sort aligner here, whatever model you take, you find all of the sort aligner here between 90 and 100% safety rate now. So they started with a GPT model, a Gemini model, a Mistral model, a Llama 3 model. And if you add here this sort aligner, everything goes above 90% safety rate. Interesting, you see that a little bit the helpfulness rate is not really increasing. Sometimes it even goes a little bit further down. So sometimes here these responses are not seen as helpful, but rather, hey, careful, this could be a trap. You have to be careful. So it was rated here less helpful, which I think is really interesting. But we are just interested here in the safety rate for the moment. Great. So, or just tell us which model did we use. They say we went with a QN 2.5, 1.5 billion free trainable parameter instruction tuned model, and with a QN 2.5, 7B instruct model. Then we created here with the fine tuning our sort aligner 1.5 billion and a 7 billion model. Great. And then the author says, you know what? We want to have a deeper examination of what's happening. And they say, you know, we take those embedding vectors here of all the outputs, and we have simply a PCA. We do now a projection to a two-dimensional semantic space. And you remember cosine similarity, beautiful. We can immediately see here the semantic closeness. So they say, we want to see here the shift in the semantic distribution before and after the correction module. And here we have it. Now, as you see in blue, I don't know if you see the blue dots here, this is here the ground truth. And then we have here the normal model. Here you have the 1.5 billion or the 7 billion model. And you see the red dots here from the QN 2.5 are really here distributed in semantic areas that are not where the ground truth or the blue dots are. So you see, with the 1.5b, you have red dots far outside. And even with the 7b model, you have the red dots here clustering in semantic region where there is hardly any blue dot. So there's something going on that's not what you want. But if you activate now this new plugin module that taught sort aligner in green, oh, wait a second, you see now if you look closer here on a PCA that now the blue dots and the green dots if you want the center of gravity of this distribution, multidimensional distribution, they now align really beautiful, as you can see here. So you achieved exactly what you set out to do from the original QN 2.5 model, where we had this red dot, this behavior that we do not want to have. Now we achieved that the blue dots and the green dots are really here in the same dimension of here, our vector space. And you see here also the overlapping histogram between blue and green. So this is exactly what we wanted. So therefore we have now indicating a strong semantic alignment and an effective correction. And this is what we set out to do. So great. Of course we have much better benchmarks. And just if you remember here from the end, really the December 2024, we have an agent safety bench. It, it really is a beautiful possibility, a benchmark to evaluate the safety of our large language model agents, encompass here 350 interaction, 2000 test cases, and so on. What's interesting, you have here 10 failure modes in our agentic safety bench. And it really goes here, harmful content without involving tool calls, or you say incorrect call of the tools before obtaining the complete information, or ignores implicit or potential risk and incorrectly calls the tools or fails to call the necessary tools. Or you see beautiful cases here, 2000 test cases. In this 10 failure mode categories are now evaluated for safety violation. And here you have it now in non-bold here, the first line, you have here the QN 2.57B instruct, or the QN 2.514B instruct, or the Gemini 1.5 flash, or the GPT-4 Omni. And then you see in bold, either the 1.5 billion free trainable parameter module, or the 7B model added to this. And you see the jump is really interesting, no? from M1 to M10, you can compare this from 13, you go to 73, or from 60 to go to 91, or from 72 to go to 90. 
So you see, there is really something happening. So the, let's call it the flow intelligence of R1, of DeepSeek R1, is now really kind of contained here in this very tiny 1.5 billion module that you can now, let's say, put on a GPT-4, Omni or Mini or whatever. So really impressive if you look at one M1 to M10, what it can achieve. Now, if you want to see this, beautiful, we have it here on Hugging Face. Here's the model sort aligner, the 7B version, the version one, of course, was just published days ago. Great. The even Hugging Face gives you here the code that you see here how it's working. You can get a feeling. It's a rather simple model, but it is a quite an interesting idea with some strong results, you know. It is more on the behavioral side, what I would say, hey, you would never expect an AI agent to behave in this particular way, do some stupid things, open some emails with some non-secure links or whatever. It is not really the heavy weight, how to say, cyber secure part, but it is so tiny, it is so beautiful. And the author say here, and this is a direct quote, it is worth noting that due to its lightweight and rapid response, less than 100 milliseconds on a consumer PC, this sort aligner, of course, based on the current R1 model by DeepSeek, holds a strong potential for deployment in embodied agents. So wherever you have embodied AI in robotic system or in edge devices or wherever you are, this is really some, some real nice module you can apply and you improve your agent security significantly. Not to the full-fledged technological level that you should do, but I think it's a beautiful first step. And therefore, if you want, we can change now a little bit the title of this video. We can go now with an agent sort optimization module that we have seen here in this publication. And I think it's great. Have a look at the paper. You find a lot more data and testing data over there. Plus, you have the link to Hugging Face and everything is available for you. If you enjoyed it, hey, why not subscribe? And I'll see you tomorrow.